Hello, welcome back to my Unity RTS series. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use the state machine pattern to implement a simple unit AI behavior. So let's jump right into it. In the Unity RTS prototype that I'm making, you of course have units and you can of course give units uh, commands to tell them to move, tell them to harvest this gold here or chop this tree down or that kind of thing. Later on in this um, prototype, I'll hope that I'll be able to add combat and things like that. But for right now, I was worrying about being able to harvest materials. So the way I approached this was I first looked into a package called Visual State Machine. I found that Visual State Machine was really interesting in that it provided a way to, as the name says, build state machines visually. So you can see down here on the left side of my Unity, kind of this like quadrant down here, we have this representation of a Visual State Machine. We have an alive state and a dead state. So these units are currently in their alive state. Now we'll see that over here on the right side in the hierarchy menu, we also have um, kind of a bunch of objects that represent our state machine. So we have a machine object, and then we have a peasant machine, and the peasant machine has states. One of those states is the alive state. Now you can see when I clicked on the alive state, the preview down here actually updated. So the, what I've implemented here is the concept of hierarchical state machines. This was not provided by Visual State Machine. I had to write my own scripts to do this, um, but that's fine. So we can see here now that I've selected the alive state and our state machine updated, we can see that the alive state has a couple different states to it, idle, moving, and interacting. So I've got this unit selected, and if I click on this or here, we can see that he moved to interacting. and you can see that the interacting state is now active. Also, you'll see here in the console that I'm logging all of the state transitions and events that are firing within this machine. So if we go back to the hierarchy and we expand the state's game object, we can also see that the interacting state, uh, when I click on it, it also updates the visual state machine kind of preview down here. So what I'm demonstrating to you is how as I said before, I implemented hierarchical state machines. So we have a peasant machine, which has alive and dead. We have an alive state machine, which has idle, moving, and interacting. And then when we click on interacting state, this machine has its own distinct nodes. It's got moving to node, harvesting, returning to depot, reaching reach depot, moving to node, etc. So this kind of hierarchical state machine is how I've decided to control the unit behavior for my various units here. So now with this unit selected, we can see that he's currently in the moving to node state. Now he's in the harvesting state. If I give him a move command, we saw that he moved to the idle state. Let's click on this gold here. We see that he moves to the moving to node. Now he's harvesting. But if I give him a movement command, it goes back to idle. The reason we're moving back to the idle state is because this child machine for the interacting state is essentially exiting or it's no longer involved in controlling this unit once I tell this unit to move. Now the reason that happens is because the alive state machine is actually what controls unit movement, not the interacting state machine. So we can see that this unit is in the moving state until I tell him to mine this gold, now he's in the interacting state. So that's a very brief introduction to state machines and how I use them in my prototype. If you found this interesting and you'd like me to go into more detail, maybe to go through the code or something like that, feel free to leave a comment, give a thumbs up, reach out to me on Twitter, whatever you want to do. But let me know and I can go into more detail. 